Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us on this February 1st. Hopefully, it's a happy Monday for all. Um, I may be a familiar face to some. Uh, my name is Eric Mullendike. I have the privilege of being the national coordinator of our Tetris Society, of our assistive device program. And today, we're going to do an overview of the Disability Foundation programs, and just as importantly, or maybe even more importantly, an introduction of Cheryl Newman. Um, Cheryl has been uh, my colleague at the foundation since September, and she is serving as the, the volunteer coordinator. And of course, volunteers are so important to, to all of our programs and what we do. Um, good afternoon, Cheryl. Hi, good afternoon, Eric. Welcome so, to everyone watching this uh, live stream. Yes, watching us live stream through Connect Together. So. Uh, it's been a pleasure getting to know you and uh, working with you over the past couple of months. For those who don't know you, um, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to the foundation um, and kind of your background? Okay, um, I'm actually uh, a mother of two. Uh, I used to work with uh, Spinal Cord Injury Ontario. I used to work as a peer support coordinator, but because I had babies, I stopped connecting with the disability uh, organizations network. Um, and yes, uh, my kids are now in elementary school and they're busy in school. And I figured out I might as well go back to work. So I heard about Disability Foundation I saw there are a lot of openings and working with volunteers before with SEI Ontario, I, I found the opportunity to work as a volunteer management coordinator with Disability Foundation. So like Eric said, I started in September and I actually love working with the people and the team behind Disability Foundation. And in your role, kind of explain your role or if somebody sees uh, something in the presentation that we're going to do today that they want to get involved in, how can you help them with that? Yes, uh, Eric is going to be presenting you or giving you an overview of what uh, our programs is all about and all the volunteer opportunities in each society. So if there's something that interests you, if you're passionate about one particular program or you have that particular skill, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I'm the one who's gonna be um, processing your on volunteer onboarding with our organization and make sure you would have the proper placement with that particular skill or opportunity you've been looking for. And when it comes to volunteering, uh, can you describe a little bit uh, like, some people may be watching today and they might be aware of volunteer opportunities with our sailing program, our hiking program, but, but people can volunteer online during this time of COVID or there are many ways to, to help out even, even um, with some of the administration. Do you wanna talk about some of those volunteer opportunities? Yes, uh, because of COVID, people might think that uh, we cannot volunteer anymore, but actually, you still can uh, volunteer with us, with Disability Foundation. Um, we are the ones, that the staff oversees the programs of all the societies and Eric will talk about uh, all of that later on. But we would love to have volunteers to work with us on general administrative fundraising and communications. So if you have the computer skills, you can do data entry with us. Everything is virtual. If you are good in profile writing or in social media, that's something that you can work with communications and that's also virtual as well. So if you have uh, skills as well with fundraising, writing grants, that's one avenue that you can explore with us. So right now with COVID, it doesn't mean that we can't do anything. We welcome a lot of volunteers and we don't have to be in person or on location to do all this stuff. So everything is virtual. And definitely we're welcoming of those who are first time volunteers. And, and what about the hours? If somebody's worried about a, a commitment of, of how much time is needed, um, 
Could you speak to that a little bit? Yes, uh, hours are flexible. You can tell us if you just want to work two hours a week, six hours a week, it depends. Um, so yes, uh, whatever time you can donate or contribute, we welcome all those hours. So there's, there's not a contract that you have to work 30 hours in a month or five hours as long as it's something that you're passionate about. And yes, here in Disability Foundation, we are quite flexible. And, and what if you volunteered in the past, but you haven't been involved in a while? Um, people could, could always re-volunteer with us or get re-engaged, correct? Yes, uh, we actually would welcome past volunteers. You've been with us before, and we would be happy to welcome you back. Um, if you've explored volunteering with one specific skills, but now you want to experience a new skill, that is something that we can explore and provide for you as well. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And again, Shell has been very, very active in reaching out to all of our volunteer corps and, and reaching out to um, so many volunteers and getting people engaged in our programs. So now that you can kind of put a face to the name of who you'll be meeting with, I'm going to do, and, and Cheryl, please feel free to chime in at any time. Uh, we're going to do an overview of what some of our volunteer opportunities are. So I'm just going to go full screen here. Can So I can see the presentation on my screen. Cheryl, can you see it? Yes. Okay, so we're just going to start at the beginning. For Again, for those who want to recap or you might be discovering the Disability Foundation um, for the first time, or what, um, what am I, what am I going to learn, or what's new? So again, our background and 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 the founder of the Disability Foundation um, is Sam Solomon. He would make a joke. He was one of the world's worst skiers. When he was 19, he was skiing and he broke his neck. And um, one of the mantras of the foundation that you'll hear throughout the presentation or interacting with us is reimagine what's possible. So this picture here is one of the highlights for Sam and, and for the Disability Foundation. You can see, hopefully you can see it's a big Olympic flag. So this was when Sam was mayor of Vancouver and he was at the closing ceremonies of the 2006 Olympics. Now, as is custom, the next host city, of course, accepts the flag and we all remember, hopefully we all have good memories of Vancouver hosting in 2010. So here was Sam waving the, the Olympic flag. And even here, he had a, a modification or a connection to the foundation because that flag holder was specially modified to support his flag and, and he could wave that. So that's kind of, that's a picture of our founder and uh, uh, definitely a highlight for him. And of course, before he was ever mayor or were involved in politics, he was somebody with a mobility challenge, looking to overcome challenges and reconnect to what he wanted to do. So he found it again, here's our logo, the Disability Foundation, and what's our vision? Now, in our vision, we say to empower and inspire people with physical disabilities, to reimagine what's possible, that's a key word. So again, as I explained about our past, our past is tied into people with physical disabilities, but people with cognitive or different challenges also participate in some of our programs. Just like Cheryl talked about with volunteering, if you're going to participate in one of our six societies, you want to pick um, the society that is the best fit for you. Um, if you're more mobile, maybe you don't want to participate in uh, hiking or getting in the trail rider, which we're going to talk about, but you might like paddling or sailing. So again, when you think of the foundation, um, think of these six organizations that um, bring the foundation together. So I'm gonna go on alphabetical order. So we always like to use acronyms because some of the names we know are quite long. So we have BC Moss. So long name, British Columbia Mobility Opportunities Society. I always say, keep it simple when you think about outdoors. Now, so last summer we did have our activities and if we do so again, just like last year, we will be observing all appropriate COVID protocols. So social distancing, 
equipment like the trail rider will be wiped down. Everything we do is not only for your physical safety, but COVID safety as well. Um, and so this trail rider here, it's locally made. This is the current model that we use. It's called the Black Diamond. So as you can see, it's got pads throughout on the back, the headrest. We also have an adapted headrest you can add for additional support. It's got a seat cushion. Now the seat cushion is just Velcroed on. So you could pull that off and you could put your own wheel, uh, your own wheelchair cushion on or your own cushion on, provided it's able to Velcro on. Um, the staff can also add additional foam as well. Um, you can have a kickstand on the back. There are different supports. And, and as you can see, it's meant for everybody. You, you know, you, if you're young at heart or a kid, and we have different kids' days, kids' activities. Um, you can see how here he's sitting on the kickstand, and so it doesn't need to be held the whole time. And what we've done is we also have kind of a, a different net or support to help shrink the seat if needed. So in an ideal world, we're going to knock on wood that COVID lessons, we would offer group hikes throughout the summer. Uh, BC Moss will have multiple hiking coordinators that will help you plan on the hike. You can see in this picture how important volunteers are. So if you're volunteering with BC Moss Hiking, that's what you're doing, helping on the hike. You're either in the front or the back of the trail rider. And I have to say this hike here at Lynn Canyon Suspension Bridge, I went on this hike way back in 2010, but I, I still remember it. And what we try to offer with trail riding is, you know, in your, in your mobility age, you might have to stick to pavement and cut curbs. And, you know, when you're in the trail rider, you can look down over a bridge, you could be at the end of a cliff. You know, everybody wants to have different perspectives and certainly different perspectives in taking in nature. And that's what we try to offer. So we always say, if you have a hiking location and you can get yourself there, um, you know, our volunteers and, and the, the trail rider will help you have an experience. So this is, now, I'm going to be honest, we're not going to be able to take you to Everest throughout the hiking season, but we do rent the trail rider. And we are proud to say the trail rider has been taken on excursions and, and rented, as you can see, to go to Everest. It's been in the Grand Canyon. Uh, West Coast Trail, and this lady was turning 50, and a true way to celebrate 50 was her and her sons, with the help of, of local Sherpas, as you can see, she took the trail rider, and, and they trained and practiced, and they went to uh, the base camp of Everest. So the trail rider is truly durable enough for whatever adventure you may have. And I just thought I'd play this video here. Uh, now, let me uh, I'm just going to stop sharing for a moment. I want to make sure that I selected the sound. Hopefully you can, can hear. So we're going to share sound and we're going to go back to our PowerPoint. I've clicked the sound on. I'm just going to turn it up. I will mention every video that I play, you can also watch it on YouTube. So if you have trouble hearing it, um, you can definitely watch it on your own time or of course, this is also being recorded. So we're gonna reshare. Okay, and we're in full screen. So I'm just going to play this video just to give you an idea of kind of hikes that we can do. And it's a great example of our volunteers working together. You did the hike with Sam yesterday too? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want a little bit more? How you doing, Eric? Good. Good. Yeah. All right. Yeah,
that was a hike that I was uh, lucky enough to experience back in 2017. For those who may be wondering, you can see the trail riders up there. And I like the shot at the end. So that is at Quarry Rock out at Deep Cove. I'm going to be honest with you. One of the reasons why people like that hike is it's near a donut shop that makes great donuts. So they always talk about uh, the honey donuts out there. But uh, you may recognize some of the, the, the faces in that video. One of the Sherpas was longtime Disability Foundation uh, staff member, David Ostro. And uh, it was a, a great day for sure. And as you can see, the Sherpas were, were doing all the work. It rained a little bit, so it looks like I was sweating, but it was really raindrops. But uh, hopefully um, at some point, maybe this summer or sometime this year, you'll get to experience those kind of activities in the trail rider. So as we talked about being active, so definitely being in the trail rider lets you connect with the outdoors and see nature. But if you want to truly get out there and exercise, we have a very active paddling program down at the Creekside Docks. So we have kayaking and uh, paddleboarding. And again, safety first. So those orange things are pontoons. The kayak's not gonna tip. We have staff that is trained to help you get into the kayak or paddleboard. Um, we have transfer aids, we have a hoist, and you can hopefully you can see on the front of the kayak, it's kind of made a little bit wider. So you can sit there in, in comfort. I should mention, you're gonna hear from coordinators next week and they're gonna talk about more in depth about the program. But I'll just mention that the plan, just like last year is to have three staff members and be open um, seven days a week for, for paddling. So, and again, here you can see the different modifications. If you can't make a fist, if you can't grip, then you can connect onto the, the paddle and, and paddle that way and, and get out and, and have those um, experiences. So don't, you know, the key is don't be shy, give it, give it a try as it were. Again, just to give you an idea of the location, uh, it's down right near Science World. So the water, it's, it's quite calm. It's not too rough. And this is an example of our paddleboard. Again, the staff will get you all situated, all on the board. And if you have the ability, the paddle's only about two pounds and you can have the freedom of paddling yourself alongside somebody, or if you need help, that's also an option. So, and here's just a little video of our, our paddling in, in action. <laughs> And thank you to YVR who helped us make the videos. So as you can see, all different age groups and abilities. Okay, so we're gonna move on to Connectra. Now Connectra, you're being a part of Connectra right now. Uh, I would have to say during this time of COVID-19, I don't know if there's been a society that's been as active as Connectra. They've really been a platform for all of our virtual content, uh, guest speakers, um, providing our other programs to promote what, what they're doing. So when you think of Connectra, think about connecting with one another. And I know during this time of COVID, we've talked about it's been challenging, but you can still connect through chat, through watching our content online or attending a workshop. Um, if you are hearing about Connectra for the first time, again, right now, um, all of our content is virtual and online through, through Facebook or, or Zoom platforms like this. And the goal of Connectra, here is a picture of when we could, what our, what our workshops would be like. Um, they're free to attend. And what I would emphasize is we not only talk about what's going on within the foundation, but also what's going on within the community. So if you ever hear of a Connectra event and you think, oh, I know what the Disability Foundation is doing. Well, there's a very good chance at Connectra you'll hear from a guest speaker outside of the foundation and hopefully learn something new. So again, we thank you for, uh, thank you to Connectra and Connect Together for, 
providing this platform to uh, provide our content. So I'm gonna move along to the Disabled Independent Gardeners Association or DIGA. Now, I have to admit, I don't have a green thumb whatsoever, but for those who either wanna get out in the gardens, here's, here's a listing of our community gardens throughout Vancouver. And again, a lot of our content has been moved online or less people at the gardens. But one of the things that will, all of our programs will have in common is accessibility to you. So whether you garden in a sitting position or you need an adaptive tool, hopefully you can see there, the tool slides up her arm and the handle, most garden tools, traditionally the handle's at the end. The handle here is in the middle so she can grip it um, so it works for her. And that's the key of all of our programs is what do you want to do? What do you imagine yourself doing? What do you, what do you want to reimagine what's possible? Do what works for you. And in the gardens, we have people that will, volunteers that will help and staff. And again, should we be able to? It's about sharing experiences. You can see the gardening plots and a cordial get together and I'm proud to say over the years, I've seen some giant zucchinis and vegetables being grown. So uh, if, if gardening is definitely for you, and, and I know one of our colleagues, Michelle, has booked online workshops. Um, you'll hear more about that next week and what's going on with DIGA. So even if though we're not in the gardens right now, there's tons of things happening with the program and online features for you to take in. We'll move on to the Disabled Sailing Association. Even if you're not a sailor, Jericho Beach is an awesome place to hang out. They have many accessible trails that you can do in a, a walker or a wheelchair. So as you can see, you can learn to sail. Um, it's for, for, for the young and the old or the more experienced. And you can see how the, the boat kind of works there. You as the person doing the sailing would be in the seat. So hopefully in this picture, you can see safety first, life jacket. Uh, we can add an additional strap. Just behind her is the sling. So we would help lower you into the boat. Two staff work on that. Everybody's trained. The boats itself, just like we talked about with the kayaks and the paddle boards, safety first. Weight on the bottom of it, it's got a 300 pound weight. So when you're in the boat, you may be riding along the waves, but I can promise you, you're not going to tip. And at DSA, we are really, really proud to say that even if you have limited hand function, um, and so Terry here, he sails through Sip and Puff. Some of you may use Sip and Puff in your daily life to drive um, your wheelchair. Well, in sailing, it's the same thing. Um, Terry would say it's, it's pretty uh, self-explanatory. You sip in to bring the sails in. And then if you puff out, if you breathe out, the sails go out. And the, the key to sailing is you got to sail with the wind. That's why when there's no wind, we say, oh, the sails are canceled because it really is about getting out there on the water and connecting with, with the wind and, and seeing what, what you can do and what's possible. We have eight boats in total. And um, it is a very popular program. You can see on the sails, the name of the boat that we use is the Martin 16, so hence, the M there, and we encourage people to learn how to race if they if they so wish, or learn how to sail on their own. Again, it's your own journey, and you can choose kind of whether you want to be like me. My sailing skills, I'm not ashamed to say, consist of just getting in the boat and working on my suntan, which I always need to do. So I'm a, a recreational sailor. So definitely, if you just want the camaraderie and the the sun and you don't have an interest in learning how to sail on your own or racing, that's okay too. Come for the fun and come for the recreation of it. Um, I'm just gonna play a little video now of one of our sailors in action.
So again, very picturesque day at um, Jericho Beach. You can even just stare out at the water. Um, and that's what it looks like. And as you could see, she could sail the boat on her own, but you can still also have a companion if you wish, just for the social aspect. Um, so now we're gonna talk about Tetra. And hopefully you can see on the screen, it says customize the sister devices. Custom, the custom is a really important word. That means built for you, built on what you um, are looking to have created. So again, I'm the national coordinator for Tetra. Most importantly for probably a lot of people seeing this, I'm the coordinator for the lower mainland, the Vancouver chapter. So if you, if here's our map, and if you're watching and you think I'm from, you know, Alberta or I'm from Vernon, well, you can see we have different chapters all um, across Canada and in different areas. And and do go to our website, um, just www.tetrasociety.org, and you can find uh, a map and a chapter near you, or you could just email me and I can help you with that. One of the great ways to get to know Tetra is our online database. Our director of operations wanted this to be like an eBay of customized devices. So I want to give a huge thank you to our volunteers because they are the ones making the devices, providing the pictures and the descriptions. And I want to thank um, Doug Doherty, who's helped populate the base and and grow. Um, we have, I believe, close to or over 800 at least descriptions, written descriptions of what's being built. So if you're not sure what you're looking for or what you'd like to have created or you wanted to know more about what Tetra is, check out our base and maybe that would give you an idea. Again, a simple device can make a huge bit of difference or maybe you're technically skilled yourself and we can help you put, put you in touch um, with the volunteer who created a device and maybe you have the ability to make something for yourself. So check out our database, which there is an icon to that on the main page of the Tetra website. If you are ready and you're intrigued and you're like, this Tetra guys look pretty interesting, I want to um, get my request in and ask for help. Well, what we can do is you can submit a request for assistance. So when you submit, a copy will come to myself or it'll come to a coordinator in your area. Now, if you have a challenge filling this out online, you can uh, contact me through email or you can email and, and kind of describe your request as best we can or we can, um, I do have a work cell, we can, we can do it over the phone together. So hopefully, we are very aware that people communicate in different ways. So if you need help with any forms, you know, we're here to help you. And the main, the main focus is to get an understanding of what you need. And I should mention that the devices are give what you can. Our volunteers um, give other time and their skills. So they will make customized devices like you see here. So we don't want finances to be a reason why you wouldn't ask for help. So I think one of the things that connect us is the need to communicate and, and share information and everybody has a phone of some type. And I don't know about you, but uh, if I drop something on the floor, it uh, is an unnecessary hassle and adds an unwanted challenge to my day. So I always say in this picture, you know, we can't buy the wheelchair or we can't buy the cell phone, but you can see we can make something modified that that ties into the mobility aid that you're using. So you can hang on to your phone and communicate. And you can see this is right in front of this phone user here and he has this independence. And then I've also been told it's never a bad idea to put cute kids um, in presentations. So we can see here a smiling baby. So you can probably already tell the modification. Any of us who are watching with a mobility challenge and we're sitting down, it's not practical or safe to have to reach over the bars of a crib. So same thing for this mother here. So the crib is the same, it is structurally sound. What 
Tetra did is we raised it so it's at the, the level of the mum or the user. And then instead of having to reach up over the bars, the bars are bifold doors, so they open up. Um, and mother and baby are face to face. The bars are the same width apart. Um, nothing was changed there as far as the distance apart. So the child's not gonna get stuck, everything's safe. And then there's a locking mechanism on the outside. Those are those, those kind of gold things there that only the, the parent can open. And then of course, Tetra devices are for all aspects of daily living, meal preparation. I should mention this table is on on wheels and so this client here she can she can drive her power chair push the table with one hand the table itself is also angle adjustable so she can lower it into the fridge or she can change the angle if she's using it to drink a coffee read a book etc and also school projects you may be watching and going to high school or university or maybe even like this boy here in elementary class, he, um, he needed a modification to his recorder and it was designed and, and done up by one of our volunteers. So it enables him to play the recorder one-handed um, and have independence. Again, if you are looking to volunteer, I wanted to mention, obviously making devices is, is a big part of Tetra, but it's not the only part. We also need outreach volunteers. There are so many stories of our members, of our projects, of our societies happening. If you are great, as Cheryl said, at profile writing, if you um, are great at social media posts, if there's a way that you feel you could help out, you could certainly be um, an outreach volunteer for Tetra. And then we also have um, Tetra gear or Tetra lights. I have one, you might have seen it in the videos on the back of my chair. So again, this is the Aerial Plus. This is the same thing this boy has. Um, and it's on a flexible gooseneck, so you can change the angle. You can push it away from your face. Or we also have the varying side strips. And as you can see in the picture, it lights up. You can also change the colors. It runs on a rechargeable battery. The battery is safely encased in a waterproof controller. So those are available. The lights are for uh, purchase. And then any lights that are purchased, the proceeds go back to help sustain Tetra Gear or the Tetra Society. But that's through, as you can see, tetragear.com. Some of you may, may be watching and longtime members of the woodworking shop, again, um, COVID allowing, the woodworking shop is at the Blossom Spinal Cord Center and open Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9.30 to 3.30. And that's where you get to uh, make things out of wood for yourself. Uh, this workshop is com completely accessible and you get tutelage from our volunteers who are specialized in making things out of wood. And here's an example of some of the crafts that uh, one of our members made for, for herself. And I will say that some of our members make like homemade pens or I've bought in some of my holiday gifts from the workshop. So stay tuned for updates and information on when the workshop will be reopening. I'm gonna scroll on now to VAMS. Last but not least, again, all musicians, I'm only going in musical order. It's not an order of importance or popularity. Um, VAMS, much like all of our programs, as busy as ever, um, they are doing virtual concerts. I just spoke to our studio coordinator um, this morning and he is preparing for another virtual concert and he said he's got to repractice seven songs. So definitely VAMS, you can meet online, um, have a chat, get an understanding. Um, I'm going to, again, I want to really uh, I believe Graham is going to be sharing more information next week. So these are just overviews. Hopefully today you get a better understanding. Maybe you have questions that we can, we can answer with our follow-up presentation next Monday at noon. Um, but the key thing is, much like all of our programs, whether it's sailing or, or paddling, you can participate 
on the level that you're comfortable with. Here are some of our more um, accomplished or um, more senior uh, performers. So they are performing in public. Again, that hasn't been happening due to um, COVID. A lot of it has been online. But if you're at a point where you're just reconnecting and learning with music, and then Graham and Vams can help you um, help you do that. So we're going to scroll along. I want to, um, I don't know what the right word is, pay respects or give a shout out to the fellow in the green shirt, Dave Symington. Um, we started the presentation talking about that Sam was the founder of the societies and the foundation. That's true, but he is the co-founder of VAMS along with Dave Symington in the green shirt. Um, Dave still loves and performs music to this day. I saw him online this weekend and uh, I don't think he'll mind. Um, he is celebrating um, his 64th birthday on Wednesday. So Dave, if you're tuning in and you're, and you're, you're watching, uh, we wish you many more years ahead and thank you for all the music. Um, Dave is a drummer and this is his band Sticks and Tones and of course being the drummer Dave is Sticks and Tones is his lead singer there Jeff on the guitar and, and vocals. So if you have ever wanted to be in your own band or or just do a recording for your own self perhaps perhaps BAMS is an option for you. Um, and then here is uh, just a little to kind of end about BAMS here's a brief video. I don't know if you missed the movies, but we'll give you kind of the theater countdown. And of course, I'm sure a lot of a lot of you watching already believe that, but the whole the whole um, point of that video was. You know, when the music started playing, um, it sounded like anybody else performing or playing. And, uh, you know, love of music knows no, no boundaries or disabilities. Um, I'm just going to, I want to show this final screen. Um, Cheryl, I'm, I'm just going to, so here's our contact information. Um, I do want to stop sharing at the moment. Um, and just say, is there anything else, Cheryl, that you wanted to add? Uh, and if people wanted to contact you and they wanted to volunteer or they wanted to be put in touch with our coordinators, and you're going to be doing a meet and greet next week with the coordinators, but if somebody is really inspired today, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Yes, if anybody who's watching this uh, live stream today and you find that you're interested to volunteer, please email me at snewman at disabilityfoundation.org and let's connect. And I, again, if somebody needs help filling out a form or providing you their information, um, you can walk them through that process? Yes, uh, all you have to do is just reach out to me, then I will uh, walk you through the step-by-step -step process. Uh, so that we can uh, place you on the skills or uh, volunteer position that you'd like to be involved with. Okay, so there what is one more video I wanted to play. I just wanted a smooth transition through the PowerPoint, but you may have heard of Netclay and those of our Netclay team, they won't forgive me if I don't uh, play one of our Netclay videos. So I'm gonna play all of this information's on YouTube, but I'm gonna play this, this video if you are watching online and you need a way to better access your computer, we have these units uh, called Netclay that can help you navigate your computer and use a cursor. Uh, we have a Netclay team that can answer your questions and they're free. So really what we ask is that you, um, you get your name out there uh, or, or indicate that you'd like a, a Netclay. There is a tab to it on the the Tetra website and uh, we will help get you set up. But here's here's a video about the features of Netclay. I'm just gonna go full screen. And again, I have, hopefully the volume is at a, a decent setting. 
and I will just uh, hit play here. NetPlay is a very customizable solution, and the input peripherals can be fine-tuned to meet individual users' needs. For a joystick, the tap speed can be adjusted to user preferences. A joystick can be configured to be a mouse with left and right clicks. When the joystick is set up as a mouse and NetClay gives a low beep, performing a quick tap down and release is a left click, and a quick tap right and release is a right click. With the touch sensor, a light box can be added to indicate the mode that the peripheral is functioning in. A light indicates which mode has been selected. With the gyro, the rate at which you need to turn your head to control the cursor or activate a mouse click can be customized for each user's comfort. Depending on the user's need, multiple peripherals can be attached to NetClay to expand the functionality and ease of use. The joystick can be modified with an accessory for users needing a different control surface. Depending on the user, different shapes and sizes of switches can be plugged directly into the hub. Commercially available switches require an adapter before they can be plugged into the NetClay hub. The splitter allows two peripherals to be connected into one connection. A mini touch sensor is also available. It operates with just a very light touch. The possibilities for what NetClay can control in the future is only growing. This represents just an introduction to the opportunity NetClay currently provides. Stay tuned for more updates as NetClay continues to grow and improve. Okay, so I want to make sure that I put this on pause. All right. So kind of what, what Dave, thank you to David Ostro for doing the voiceover work there in that video was saying, um, just like uh, he said, stay tuned for more updates on Nick Clay, stay tuned for more updates of Connect Together and we're gonna kind of change roles. Next week, Cheryl's gonna be the interviewer and you're gonna get to meet your program coordinators of the programs of the Disability Foundation. Um, I just wanted to ask, I hope you can hear me. Adam, is there any, um, any questions in any of the chat or um, Cheryl, is there anything that um, you think that I've, I've missed? Again, if you want more information, um, tune in next week, it'll be from, from noon to one and you'll get to meet some um, new faces, friendly faces and kind of who will be involved in the, in the programs and, and Cheryl's gonna be showcasing her interview skills. So. Yeah. So Thank I you. think you pretty much covered everything, Eric, so. Okay, well, thanks so much for, for everybody's time and, and Cheryl, it's been great to um, kind of get to know you or thank you for sharing a bit of your story today. And uh, one thing I can tell you is Cheryl is not shy. So if you would all want to volunteer, she would love to connect with you and you will definitely see more of her um, throughout the year and involved in our programs. Um, if there's nothing else, then um, thanks so much. Again, this will also be posted, I believe, on the Facebook page of the foundation. So you can watch it at your leisure. And we look forward to having you participate in our programs either as a participant or a volunteer. So thanks so much. Happy Monday and have a great week.